It's Wednesday, the 27th of October, 2021, and welcome to another Timeware Partner Podcast. My name's Simon Birchall. We've got a special guest with us today, Oliver. How's it going, Ollie? Yeah, going very well, Which thank you, Which team are you working? Which team are you in? Um, I'm part of Matt's team, Team 2. And and, and all, we're joined by the mighty Mike Coop, who's somewhere in the building. Okay. Yeah, yeah. How's <laughs> it going? Has it been a good week? Uh, yeah, it's been all right. It's definitely more emails, just waiting for some more afters. <laughs> nice one. Ollie, how's your, how's your week been? You've been doing some SLAs. Yeah, no, I've been quite busy this week. Um, just been on a trip down to Flintshire to do yep. an upgrade for Merlin Circuits, Brilliant. which went very well. SLA nice. 1 to 3 from version 11. Well done. Good. Okay, Mike's lucky buddy. He's doing his, his, uh, we don't normally mention customer names, but to be able to let that one go. Through. Right, this short podcast is just to talk just to talk briefly about a uh, Time Word Personnel Farm event. So... Who wants to? Who's the expert in this? Who, I want you to tell everybody. Ollie, you're the expert. Okay. Oh, do you want to explain to people that what it is roughly? Just, just a quick, a quick overview of what it is, and and why we um, and why we have it, and then we'll go into a bit more detail after. Go on. So, um, so the personnel farm event script uh, helps when completing or filling out personnel records when first setting employees up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so one of the main features is that um, we can force the user to fill out certain fields. Okay. Um, another use for it would also be to auto fill out fields when re- doing um, when setting up personnel records. Also, what what's the purpose of this? Why do we want to force people to fill fields in? Because uh, sorry, go on, mate. It's all right. Let Ollie continue. Mike, you interrupt everybody. Sorry, well. So uh, one of the most important reasons to make people fill out fields is to uh, miss off well stop missing information. Um, also, okay. some fields are required for other parts of the software. For example, give me an example Ollie, of, of why it's important not to miss. A, you know, what, what's a field and why is it important? Yeah. So, um, for example, if you were to use ESS, uh, the employer would require an email address filled out in the personnel record. Okay. Obviously, if we did not force you to fill that um, field out, um, then it just wouldn't work for you. That's a problem. It's right. Okay. So this is. So this is um, this is a way of sort of streamlining things, um, I guess. Does um, does does the personnel farm event does that control which fields we get to see in personnel? It doesn't. No, it no. just controls what gets filled out and what doesn't. Okay. Um, c- could it could it be used to stop somebody filling something out? Um, it could, yeah. Or, however, it isn't as set in there as standard, um, oh. although it is something that we could probably add on to it. Okay, what I'm thinking is for GDPR, imagine a customer's decided they don't want to record the names, the, sorry, the address of somebody. Could we set up the form event, so the, the personal form event, so that it, it, if somebody saved, it cleared that field down? We could do, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because And that, the reason could be that they've got an HR system with that already in, yeah? Yeah. So that and and uh, holding it in two places might be a breach. Yeah, it stops of, uh, duplication. GDPR yeah. rules. Okay. Sorry, Matt. What were you going to say earlier when you interrupted Ollie? What were you going to jump in with? Oh, that was a good a good minute ago. <laughs> <It's gone. laughs> right. When? Okay. So let's just. What happens? We we're doing a new install. Uh, we're doing a, a brand new install. Um, I'm guessing the the installation team, the implementation team. Sorry, would 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 uh, would uh, would talk to the customer about the the defaults and any yeah. tweaks that were needed. So in your experience, what extra, what special things, Ollie, have you seen put in there that, that, that sort of non-standard? Um, off the top of my head. Um, what about connections to third party systems? Yeah, so if you were required uh, the same employee ID or the same payroll number to be pushed through into somewhere, um, what we can do is we can set the employee ID as the badge number. Right. Um, and so as soon as you go to fill out that record, it will do that automatically for you. Okay, Mike, you've got a bit of experience with the partners. Do you, do you think all the partners are aware of this form event and aware of the power of what it could do, how it could help? I think by default, it comes with what certain fields enabled. So okay. they, they will be aware of what it does. Uh some people do turn some of them off, so I'm guessing they do use it daily. It's just got some extra things in there that they probably never used before. 
when uh, Nathan Beveridge documented these the default scripts a couple yeah. of months ago, is this clearly is this yeah is this fairly yeah. clear? And and you can find the the notes for this on is it timeware.info? It's dot info, yeah, the notes. Yeah. Yeah. And which area? Which 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 page? Uh, you go on. I think you go on downwards, and it's on there. I believe. There. I'll just check. Have a quick look. Um, and this is something that I think we're going to be talking more in the podcast of the trade about some of the um, some of the some of the, the the default scripts that are in there, and and just trying to give them ideas of how it could improve the installation or improve the functionality of the product for the customer. Go on. Have you found out where? Yeah, it's on the documents, not downloads. It's on documents, so doc, it's, it's all in the documents folder. Okay, anything else we need to add on this one? Um, uh, no, it's going to be more important, obviously, with the SS Go. Uh, yes. So you're going to, you're probably going to be tweaking what you've got in there at the minute. Yeah. The the rules on it because we need obviously the mobile numbers and the uh, what's it called the email addresses. Right, and the mobile number. Um, we've created. Have we created a new field for that? Are we? Are we pinched? Have we renamed one of the old fields? I think we might have renamed renamed the pager. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I we've... think we have, but that's. Uh, can't confirm that yet but that's a good example so it, for customers that want to use uh if you've got a customer an end user that wants to use ESS go we have to record their email address and the telephone the mobile phone number so that would be a tweak to the default wouldn't it um, yeah that's it yeah okay we're going to cover that the ESS configuration in a in a workshop just after the launch uh sometime late next month right anything else on this that we need to Need to discuss? No. Okay. If anybody's got any questions about the personnel form event, if any of the trades want to come through, Mike, who should they approach? Uh, it'll be support, support originally. Okay. So you come through to Charlotte on support at timeware.co.uk uh, on the usual number, which is plus four four one seven zero six six five eight two two two. Yeah. Is that it? And we done? Right, yeah. Great, guys. Done. Thanks very much for your help. Bye bye. Cheers.